So I think we can all agree communication is key in relationships and dating. And one of the reasons why so many people don't get better results is because they're overlooking the need to communicate. And let's get even more specific by saying many uh, find unfavorable results because they're afraid to ask certain questions. Now, I'm always encouraging you ladies to ask questions, to talk, to dive deeper, so that you can get a really clear picture of the man you're dealing with, right? And there, and we can always say there is no such thing as a bad question, but we might have some that actually are a little, <laughs> maybe not the greatest to ask, okay? So I want to lay out what some of those horrible, bad questions that might be to, to ask in the early stages of dating. But I'm going to, with each one, kind of give the counter argument to why it may still be good to ask or a better way to ask it. Okay? So let's get into this first one. This one is a little spicy. Okay? But I figure let's, let's start off with a bang. So one of the first horrible questions to ask in the early stages of dating is, are you gay? <laughs> okay? Now, y'all might not be familiar with it, but there's this meme, this clip of this um, a, a reporter in Africa. I'm not going to get into it. It's this funny uh, interview where he asks, are you gay? But anyways, let's get into this question. Now, some of you might be thinking, in today's world... That's not a bad question to ask, and we need to know, right? And I get that. So be but before we get into why this might be, it's an understandable question to ask, let's discuss why it can be a very bad question to ask, especially or more specifically when you don't ask it correctly, okay? To flat out just ask a man, is he gay, and not provide any context to your question or to ask it in a way that you are, you're hinting as if you are, you're one, like, if you, if you ask the way that you're almost damn near accusing him of being it, it can be a problem because, of course, if this man is not indeed gay, well, he's going to be offended by that, and, or he may be offended by it, and that can throw everything off, all right? Not to mention that I understand that if you're trying to discover, if you're dealing with a man who may be playing on both sides, so to speak. Well, I think one argument can be made, well, is that kind of guy really going to tell you that he is? If he's on his date with you, very good chance he's not trying to reveal that side of his life. Now, does that mean don't, don't ask it for that reason? No, because the reality is that anyone can lie about any question. doesn't mean you shouldn't ask it, right? But I think the main thing with this question as to why it can be horrible is really about how you ask, the context. Like, I've seen some women kind of just blurt it out out of nowhere. To the man, it's out of nowhere. Maybe to her, it was kind of just lingering in her mind because she saw something or is just worried. You know, I used, I used to live in Atlanta. I'm not going to tell you where I live now, but I used to live in Atlanta. Um, and Atlanta is known for, or at least is believed or known to have a higher population of gay men. So I think a woman asking that question in that city makes a little bit more, makes a lot more sense. <laughs> we get a little bit more sense, a lot more sense. So I do think that depending on the city, what is common in that area, it gives a greater argument to ask that question. Also, when we say asking it without context, I think it's important that if you are going to ask a man if he's gay, you add the context of you're asking to be safe because it's common out there that you have men who may be gay and still are dating women, and that may not be something that you as a woman want. Because if you don't add that context, then his assumption may be you're asking because you think he is. Or you're asking because he is displaying behavior that makes you question if he's gay. And that can undermine the situation. That can create friction. That can create insecurity, so on and so forth. So you want to make sure that if you're going to ask, you let him know why you're asking. And don't make it about him personally. Now, let's entertain the fact that maybe you actually are asking 
because he is, in your eyes, showing signs that he may indeed be gay. At that point, let me ask you this. If this man is behaving in that way, that makes you want to question it, even if he tells you no, are you going to be comfortable still dating him? <laughs> I mean, if, if you, every time you got to look at this man, you are wondering if he is because he's doing whatever you think is a sign of being gay, how comfortable will you be dating him? So at that point, to me, I don't think the question needs to be asked. I just think you need to move on. And, and find someone else to date because you're not going to be okay even if he says no. If you're, if you're hoping to remain there, maybe you, rather than ask if he's gay, you could ask, hey, I noticed you do this thing. What, where'd you get that from? Like, you, you, you can investigate the behavior, the act, whatever it is, the mannerism that is making you question it. I think that's a safer route to take. You know, and then maybe it's a fixable thing. But again, if you have to ask yourself, if he said, oh, yeah, I got this because I, I don't know, friends and family used to do this and I picked it up from them. I don't know, whatever it is. Are you going to be cool with that? And if not, no point in moving forward. All right. So here's another horrible question to ask in the early stages of dating. And that is, how many women have you slept with? Okay. Now, I think... Most, most people, most adults would probably say they have no interest in asking that question, right? Or at this point, they find it as an unnecessary question to ask. And personally, I would agree. And I'm going to explain why. But let me just say that there are many people who still decide to dive into that topic. And I think, I believe it is a bad question to ask because... One, let's start with the fact that I'm not saying no one's capable of being honest and being straightforward about how many people they've been with. And of course, their willingness to be honest, I believe, can, can weigh heavily on or be dependent on how many people they actually did sleep with. So, for example, if you ask a man, he really likes you, right? Um, and he's, he's generally trying to push this thing forward. And you ask him how many women he slept with. If he only slept with three women, five women, all right, I think there's a greater chance that he will just be very honest about that. But let's just say this dude slept with 150 women. And for some of y'all shaking your head, that does exist, okay? There's plenty out there that, that exists like that. That's not the average man, though. That's not the average man. But let's just say he slept with 150 women. Uh, he's probably not going to be comfortable saying 150 to the woman he's actually seriously trying to pursue. Shoot, he's probably not going to be comfortable saying 150 even to the woman he's just trying to sleep with. All right? So I think trying to get honest answers from people about that, it's not that it can't happen. I just think that chances of us getting it isn't very likely. Now, the other problem is, if you ask that question, are you prepared to now answer in return? Okay? And I would argue, and here's what's funny. I think what, what I have found, I'll say this. What I have found is that most people who are still trying to ask that question consider themselves to not have been with that many people to be good with. So they're very comfortable with the discussion because to them it's like, well, I haven't been all over the place anyway, so why can't we talk about this? The people who, who, who got some experience under their belt, uh, a decent amount, whatever that might be, because everybody's number of what is a lot or a good amount of experience is different, they're more like, ah, we ain't got to talk about that. <laughs> There's no reason to, to go down that, that discussion, that go down that path. But anyways, so if you ask it, I'm going to assume that probably meant because you yourself haven't been with that many. But to me, ultimately... It, it opens the door to unnecessary concerns that don't address the real issues, okay? Because to me, the real issue, and don't get me wrong, I, I think, I understand that the argument of knowing their sexual past as far as how many people they've been with can give you a better idea of who they are, their character, all these things. However, it doesn't always tell the full story without actual full details and context of their life path, okay? 
not to get too deep into it, but for example, I've seen people who they may have a year in their life where they racked up big numbers, okay? And maybe that year, it could be for various reasons. For some, it was they went to college and they just got crazy. For some, it was they were going through some stuff and they found comfort in just trying to sleep with different people. For some, it could be they thought, okay, like I, I know of women who have gotten divorced and that first or second year out of divorce, because they were married at a young age and they've been basically, they've never really experienced dating and different people, they've only been with one man, they kind of went on a rampage sexually to experience things because people were telling me, you need to go live your life. The point is, all these various possible reasons, but in many of these stories, it was that one year or that one stretch where they were all over the place, and then after that it was like, this ain't me, or I don't like this, this doesn't work for me, and they changed. And so you ask the number, you hear this number without understanding the context of it, that one year does not define their whole life. It doesn't define how they really view sex and, 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 and sleeping with different people and all this kind of stuff. It's just that that one year, it was an outlier, okay? So to me, you've got to really be prepared to go, if, if that's what you're trying to gain from that discussion, you've got to go deeper and understand there's details. The same way like someone who's in their mid-20s giving a number, let's just say someone who's in their mid-20s says 10, but someone who's 40 says 10. 10 to, with a 40-year-old and 10 to a 25 is two different things. You see what I'm saying? Or it's two, diff, it's two different things in how the average person will perceive that. So to me, it just doesn't, there's so many much more context to add to the discussion. So with that said, the number doesn't really give you the full story. But two, I think the bigger, the better question to ask is when's the last time you got tested? And if you're going to be engaging with them physically is saying, can we get tested? I think that is a great question. Nothing wrong with that. It's not dependent on their number and who they... It's just, no, because that's one of the big real concerns right now is, okay, what am I getting myself into sexually if I lay down with this person? And, and that at least helps clear up that issue and helps keep you safe. You know what I'm saying? At least contributes to it. So either way, I think the whole how many people you slept with, eh, you can ask it if you want, but I, I, I'm not a big fan of that question. All right, so... Next horrible question to ask a man in the early stages of dating is, how much money do you make? Now, why is this a bad question? Well, first let me acknowledge that there's nothing wrong, as far as I'm concerned, with a woman who desires a man who is financially stable, all right? I'm, 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 I'm not the biggest fan at some of the specific financial requirements some women have because I think they lack a deeper understanding of what's really going to be beneficial and necessary for a healthy relationship. But everybody has a right to have their preferences and their requirements, okay? But we have to understand that one of the biggest concerns that a man has uh, for most men is a woman only wanting them for their money. I always make the joke, even the men who don't have money are scared of a woman taking their money, <laughs> all right? So understand that men who are doing well for themselves or who are stable or whatever, that's something that for most at least plays in the back of their mind. It's, it's something that they're looking out for and they're concerned about. They don't want to get played. They don't want to get used. And so as a woman... You asking the question, how much do you make? And again, we're saying in the early stages of dating because yes, at some point that will need to be discussed. At some point, we will have to have a better, clearer picture of each other's financial standing. And, and I think some can make the argument, well, if that's the case, why can't we talk about it as early as possible? I think we have to at least establish we really like each other. We, we want to take that next step to being together, committed. And if you want to ask that question before we put a stamp on this, you know, us making this official, I think that's fair. But I think it should not come before first evaluating, do we really like each other like that? Do we really want to be with each other? Then we can maybe dive into that. But just know that even at that point, 
if you're not careful with how you discuss it, it can cause that man to see a red flag. It can cause him to be a little more, more hesitant and kind of have one eye open with you when it comes to money, okay? Now, what I do think is a much better question or a set of questions to ask in the early stages with a man is about his money management or his relationship with money. So one of the reasons why I said I'm not a fan of some, a lot of women's requirements. So like when I, when I hear women say, and I'm just going to use the standard $100,000 a year. When I hear a woman say, men need to make six figures. What bothers me about that is she's overlooking the bigger picture of his money management. So let me give this example. You could have a man making $120,000, but he is riddled in debt. He has poor money management and he is literally living check to check. I believe, I'm, I'm trying to get this right, but I believe the statistics say 37% of people making 250 grand a year or more is li- or 250 grand a year and up is living check to check. Okay? So m- how much one makes does not determine how much one has available to spend. All right. How much how generous that individual is. Right. Or how they even view being a provider for a woman or any of these things. So you want to find that out about the man, because on the flip side, I have met men making, let's just say, seventy five thousand dollars for the year. But this man has been making seventy five thousand dollars a year for the past 10 years. Lives below his means is one guy I'm thinking about specifically right now lives below his means, owns his home, has 401k, has investments. This man is well set up, has plenty of savings, and has more disposable income than the guy making $125,000. And his mentality, I'm speaking of the one I'm thinking about right now, is I want to be a provider for my woman. You know, I'm going to take care of her. She'll have the option to not have to work. Like everything that a lot of women would love to have. But because people are getting so caught up in the how much you make number, won't even entertain the 75K dude, even though he's better off than the hundred and something thousand guy. So I do think that as a woman, it's better to ask questions to understand, okay, do you believe in savings, investment? You know, what's his level of generosity? How does he view? Is he a good tipper? And and I say that because I do think, I'm not saying just because someone's not the greatest tipper, that means they're automatically stingy. You have to find out why that is. But I do think that typically people who are great tippers tend to be generous people. All right. So that's at least an indicator that he is not stingy with his money if he is willing to give like that. How what is he how willing is he give to family and friends that that need his help? Whatever it is. And again, that doesn't the family and friends thing doesn't completely define him either because he he may not be trying to give money to them because they they're bad with money, but he'll completely take care of his woman. Either way, you get my drift. You want to find all that other stuff out. But asking flat out how much he makes. Not the best question to ask. All right, so we got a couple more to go. But before I continue, I want you to go to my store, stephonspeakshop.com, and get your tickets for my Time for a Change tour or any of my future events coming that's coming to your city, as well as books, coaching programs, coaching sessions, you name it. It's all there. Go to stephonspeakshop.com or click the link in the description or in the comment section. Now, moving along to the next horrible question to ask ask a man in the early stages of dating and that is do you think she's prettier than me <laughs> okay now listen you know you, one let's just start with the reality that no matter how fine you are no matter how much your partner thinks you are the most beautiful person in the world and and I'm sure they may feel that way at times But that doesn't mean they won't ever see someone who may be prettier, quote unquote, than you. Does that mean they want them more? No. Does that mean they would see themselves, could see themselves with them at all? No. But 
we all have somebody that looks better than us. At least, at least somebody, if not tons of people who look better than us, no matter how good a person looks. So one to ask that question is like such an unfair, <laughs> realistic question. Now, sometimes you might be thinking, yeah, but I'm not thinking about women in general. I'm asking about this specific woman that maybe he mentioned or passed by or is an old friend or an ex or whatever the case may be. But to me, it's like, what do you expect the man to say, right? Even if he does think she was prettier than you, unless he has a deaf wish, he's not going to say that, all right? He's going to control himself, probably, hopefully, and be like, no. But the problem is, the way he says no, you might sense, this dude is lying. <laughs> and now you're mad because you feel like he's not being honest with you. So now we're creating these unnecessary issues because we ask a very unnecessary question, all right? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if someone is prettier or he thinks they look better. What matters is, is he attracted to you? Is he happy with you? Is your relationship thriving? Or is your dating experience going well? That's what matters. Now, if you want to ask a man, hey, you know, what do you think I could do that would make me, that would increase your attraction to me? Okay, I think that's a great question to ask. You know, if you think, if you ask, what do you think I could do that would optimize my, my looks more, right? I think, again, great, fair question to ask. But anything that involves comparing you to someone else is just creating unnecessary problems. So avoid that question, stay away from it. And I gave you some ones that you can use that are much, much better. All right. So here's another one. And I got a bonus after this. The other horrible question to ask a man in the early stages of dating is, when was the last time you cried? Now, why is that a bad question? You know, I talked about earlier how one of the things men are very sensitive about is the fear of a woman wanting them or using them for their money. And another thing that men are extremely sensitive about is a woman viewing them as weak or losing respect for them. Okay? And what typically goes along with that fear of being viewed as weak is allowing themselves to cry in front of a woman. Now, Though this situation is not about him crying in front of a woman, it's about him acknowledging a moment like that, right? And so for a lot of men, it's not the most comfortable thing to answer, even if he has a moment he can reference. Now, listen, some men aren't going to have any problem with it. Some men will stand on when they last cried or they'll, they're just not afraid to share those deeper parts with you whatsoever. But I do think that asking in that way can cause some men to be on the defense in that moment and want to gloss over a situation and therefore you not really getting what you needed out of that conversation. Because ask yourself, what am I really trying to find out when I ask this man, when was the last time he cried, right? And I think what you're trying to find out is one, like to see what he's sensitive to, to see if he allows himself to open up in that way, to see the things that have affected him, to see if he has that more emotional side of him, so to speak. And I think if, when, if you're trying to discover that about him or just trying to get him to open up in general, I think a much better question to ask him is, when was the last time something deeply affected you? Okay. And I think that question makes it more comfortable for the man to be open about something that happens to them that affected them. Because they don't have to talk about, well, I cried. And it may lead into them admitting that they cried in that moment. I don't know. But I think that that helps crack the door open to that conversation more. It's a, it's, it's, it, just, it eases them into it a lot easier without them worrying about the whole crying part and acknowledging that to this woman that you got to remember when a man's trying to get to know you and he's feeling you, he's into you, he wants to impress you. He wants to look like a strong man in your eyes and, and acknowledging crying. And, and don't get me wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with a man having a woman that he cried. I don't think there's anything wrong with admitting to that. I just, I'm just acknowledging the fact that for a lot of men, it is a concern. It is a fear. And you can hear tons of stories from men who will tell you that when they allow themselves to be that vulnerable with a woman, 
it, they, they lost her. She lost respect. It, it caused all kinds of problems. So they have a reason why they think like this. But asking what has, what was, when was the last time something deeply affected you, I definitely think would work a lot better than asking about the crying. All right, so here's my bonus for today. And, and I'm, listen, there's a lot more questions we can discuss. I'll probably do a different video for the extra questions I can think of. But for right now, the bonus, horrible question to ask a man that you're dating is, do you think I'm getting fat? <laughs> okay? This is, this is pretty much like the, do you think she's prettier than me? Men have... Let me start with this. I remember a story of a, a couple I counseled, and they were going through some issues, and um, <clears throat> they were having some issues in the bedroom, okay? Um, and they were, you know, they weren't going to counseling, but they were, you know, ha they would talk to friends and things like that. But anyways, one day I hear about this huge fight that they have, and I'm like, well, what happened? And... It turned out that the husband has said to her, and I, I don't, forgive me, I don't remember how it came about, but he essentially told her she's, she's gained a little too much weight, all right? And she lost it. She went off on him. And so there are millions of stories of men who have made even a whisper <laughs> of mentioning that their woman has gained weight or gotten fat or whatever and have paid a heavy, heavy price. Which is why when a woman asks that question, man immediately thinks you're trying to set me up. This is a setup question, and if I do not answer this correctly, it's gonna be a problem. And unfortunately, it's hitting my spirit, so I have to say this. You know, one of the sad, unfortunate things that I have found in all my years of doing this, and I was just speaking to uh, what is now about to be a divorced man about it, is the fact that one of the most common unspoken issues in relationships and marriage is loss of physical attraction, all right? And people have been shamed into not being honest about that issue when it occurs in their relationship. And everyone wants to say, well, if you love them, this wouldn't be an issue, or what's on the inside that counts. Granted, we understand all of that, but the reality is that one of the ingredients to a romantic relationship is physical attraction. And there was a level of attraction that allowed us to enter into this relationship. So thinking that we're going to keep this together without it is asking for a lot. And in, in most cases, it's unrealistic. And what happens is because it's not spoken of in honesty, all these other issues get piled on and... People are fighting about all this other stuff, but they're missing the fact that it all started because the attraction fell off. And if we could just be more real with each other, because listen, I'm not claiming this to just be a woman's issue, right? This happens on both sides, both sides not looking the way they used to look or letting themselves go, whatever the case may be. And by us not being real about it, we cannot properly address and correct it. And all it does is then linger and create bigger issues, all right? So you know what? With me bringing up the whole asking if, I'm, if you're getting fat, it would be a beautiful question to ask if you make sure you establish in your relationships that we can have this level of honesty with each other. If we establish early that we can tell each other when things aren't right. Like, I'm going to tell you, me personally... Whoever I'm going to be with is going to, is going to understand she has every, she has complete freedom to constructively criticize me about anything. If she thinks I'm falling off physically, tell me. If I ain't doing something right in the bedroom, tell me. I don't care what it is. My ego ain't too big. <laughs> I, I can humble myself very fast. I'd much rather know so I can make it better than for it to go unspoken and it just create more issues. So if we can establish that kind of transparency in our relationships, then asking if you got fat now becomes a wonderful question of just checking in with your partner, making sure everything is cool, what they think, you know what I'm saying, and being real with each other. 
But it's not just creating an environment where we can be transparent. It's creating an environment where we don't take things so personally or that we're not sensitive to it in a way that we take it the wrong way and now create a problem that does not need to be created. Okay? We have to view it as an opportunity to be better for each other rather than to get mad because they hold this opinion. Now, let me just say, it doesn't mean whatever their opinion is, it, it has to be something that you like. Basically, I'll, let's leave marriage alone for a second. If this is established in dating and you ask your man, okay, you think I've gained too much weight? And he says, yeah, I, I honestly do. And you genuinely feel like where you are, you are the happiest you've ever been. And you're healthy and everything's good, even though it don't work for him. I'm not saying you got to change it for him. I think at that point, maybe we just got to understand that we're, maybe we're not best for each other if this has affected his ability to be happy with you or attracted to you. But if it's something that can or you are willing to fix or, you know, there's no reason for you not to fix it, then why not? Why not? So... Yes, I think with that, make sure to create that, that environment of full transparency in a relationship. That's one of the healthiest things you could do that will create a lot of success. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here where I give you the seven great questions to ask a man in the early stages of dating. Had they asked that man the question from day one, what do you see the role of the man and the woman is? they would have found that out from the beginning.